giving me an opportunity to speak on the BIS bill, which is proposed to replace, replace the existing 1986 Act. Sir, this is a very important bill. If India is to become a global economic superpower, standards are an extremely important subject, and we cannot become a global economic superpower without passing such type of bills. It's also very important from the point of view of ease of doing business and our Make in India initiative. It's good that the bill proposed to widen the scope and bring in more products under the standards regime and end the Inspector Raj, which is a positive sign. It also aims to prescribe, through the proposed legislation, standards for services and processes under its ambit for the very first time. Mandatory certification regime of article process or service is necessary from the point of view of health, safety, environment, prevention of deceptive practices, security, etc. So I welcome this bill, sir. I hope that it contributes to improve the ease of doing business in the country. It is a good sign that the bill is allowing multiple types of simplified conformity assessment schemes, including self-certification and market surveillance, instead of inspectors visiting factories, thereby ending the inspector Raj on standards. Apart from this, the bill also proposed to recall products even if these were ISR marked, but not conforming to relevant Indian standards. The other positive aspect of the bill is that it allows foreign and Indian entities other than the Bureau to be recognized as the standardizing authority. This is done to create an investor-friendly regulatory framework which is in tune with global standards along with protecting the consumer. But the problem with the bill is that it seeks to place several activities into a single place, which is not an international practice, and nowhere in the world had national standards body utilized the way we do in India, because it is doing regulatory work, market surveillance, registration, and so many other things. So I suggest for the consideration of the Honorable Minister to allow BIS to primarily focus on certification and standardization. Coming to the definitions clause, I did not find any definition of certification or accreditation. I request that the terms may also be defined as accepted internationally to avoid any disputes in future, sir. BIS has prepared a standard ISISO IEC 17000-2004, which contains definitions on review and attestation. So in the same way, certification and accreditation may also be defined. Now I will come to Clause 7 of the bill, which deals with the appointment of Director General. Sir, BIS is a fully autonomous body, not financed by the central government. Clause 7, bar 3, indicates that the central government will appoint Director General is not advisable. It amounts to interference in the affairs of an autonomous organization. Secondly, BIS is a scientific and technical organization and needs a scientist or a technical person to head it. Under the earlier NDA government, a committee under Sri Sharad Pawarji recommended that the BIS should be headed by an eminent scientist. The government accepted this recommendation but has not implemented it so far. So I request for better maintenance of standards, BIS should be headed by a scientist, sir. Now under clause 9.2.F, the bill proposed direct accreditation by BIS, which is in direct conflict of interest. I am saying conflict of interest because BIS, BIS itself is a conformity assessment body for testing or certification service or, st or standard setting service. So how can it accredit other similar bodies? It is a conflict of interest and is, it is recognized internationally. So when BIS is not involved in the activity of accreditation and when this work is being done by National Accreditation Board for Certification Bodies and Quality Council of India, and BIS itself has been accredited by an accreditation body for its management system certification scheme. How can BIS accredit other bodies, sir? This is a clear conflict of interest and needs to be removed. The bill is a consumer friendly and helps in stopping unfair and unscrupulous pr trade practices because the existing bill lacks legal power to prosecute the unfair people. It's a very good move, sir. Also, sir, I would suggest that Somehow, we also need to align this with the Advertising Standard Council of India, sir. Many times I've seen in the country where various manufacturers are making certain claims about products or services that don't hold true. And how can that be, be held account? How can they hold that 
the people accountable and how can it be aligned with the BIS and other bodies? That's something that needs to be studied, sir. The Honorable Minister is aware that for so last so many years, the government is not financially supporting the BIS and BIS itself is surviving on its own. Now the bill proposes to give more autonomy to the BIS. It is a welcome step. But mentioning prior approval of the government for doing such and such thing by the BIS cripples the BIS to go down to the block level to ensure BIS certified goods are supplied to the customer. It also hampers an expansion of its infrastructure, which is a must in the area of standardization with rapidly changing technology. So I request the Honorable Minister to remove government control on BIS and let it expand on its own infrastructure all over the country. Clause 10.3 talks about the constituting technical committees. In practice, at present, the highest committee in the BIS dealing with standards formulation is a standards advisory committee. Then there is the division council which finalizes the standards. The division council also constitutes sectional committees, subcommittees, and panels. But there is no mention of division council in the bill. You are only taking, talking about technical committee, which is non-existent in the present setup of BIS. So there is confusion. I request the Honorable Minister to please clarify this. The next point is BIS issues certificate of conformity under clause 13. But if any risks arise, I'm concluding, sir. But if any risks arise from its certification, who is going to compensate? It's common knowledge that BIS has to compensate. But there's no mention as to what arrangements that BIS have to cover liabilities arising from its operations in the geographical area in which it operates. There's no mention about insurance or corpus to address any such eventuality. You have only said that BIS is a body corporate under clause 3.2, and, it can, be sue, and it, can be, it can sue and be sued. So I request the Honorable Minister, since government is not going to fund BIS henceforth, how BIS is going to address this issue. Sir, there, I think the, one of the major issues beyond certification is enforcement. There are so many enforcement bodies in the country and enforcement agencies, and concerted coordination among all of them will make it more effective. How will we take up this concerted effort is something that needs to be looked at. So with the proposed bill, I am confident that India will catch up with the world standards and fulfill the Honorable Prime Minister's slogan of zero defect, zero effect. Thank you, sir. And just because two film actors, which almost I say in Make in India, their whole contribution is very good. So let's not run down Shah Rukh Khan and Amir Khan. They have contributed substantially globally for India.